Well, this is going to be a long one. Stick around to the end as there are some real cool cluster references in this. Gaming Yarns here. I'm sure you'll want to know what I think is going on on the Helix Station. This will be a breakdown of the first two episodes of said podcast. But first, hit that like and subscribe button and get notified when more Callisto content is coming your way. The voice talent here is impeccable. Now, I love an audio story, so this is right up my alley. But I'm hearing people who don't usually enjoy this kind of content get sucked in. So they're clearly doing something right here. So we meet Percy and Kane, two skip tracers collecting bounties, and they're tracking Crowbar. Percy sees a jail full of people, or cannibals, eating each other and shitting and sleeping in amongst all of them. Yum. They detail that Crowbar is doing this to these people and ever so slightly indicate, since they're in the same moon system as Callisto, that he might be potentially testing the grubs out on them. But also, he could just be a madman creating his own type of drill. They finally catch up to this psychopath drilling holes into a poor helpless man's head and Percy puts one in his knee, BAM, and proceeds to let the cannibals eat him. Oof, gnarly. Kroba mentions UJC can be bought just like last time, meaning he has been doing this at least for a while with the UJC knowing all about it. Kinda fucked up when you think about it. What shady shit are the UJC up to? Lots of stuff gets mentioned in the first two episodes, such as the many moons around Jupiter, such as Io, Europa, Ganymede, where people live and work, which could be poking at future stories, all on the moons of Jupiter, with Callisto being one of them. You know, something like insert moon here protocol? They also mention protecting the Jovian planets, which are Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now that Pluto isn't a planet anymore, poor Pluto. Steeping themselves in realistic lore of the planets and moons in our solar system, brilliant! The UJC Corrections turn up, who are an elite team who protect Black Iron and take over Percy's and Kane's ship, whom tracked them for a special mission. Ferris gets on the old blower and tells them their special mission. Off to the Helix Station, where Percy has been before. Ferris is the right-hand man of the Warden. With a chin like his, you don't need a stun ban, but a very dangerous man, I'm assuming. Percy is having flashbacks throughout of kids crying and people blaming her of her actions and people screaming her name. PTSD clearly is a horrible thing and needs to have a jab of something something to calm her nerves. It is said that she has a permanent spinal tap for the gear to go in. This is something a woman has for an epidural during childbirth to kill the pain. Percy is on some major gear right here. Percy mentions that Helix takes from you rather than gives. Clearly her experience messed her up. We don't know exactly what she did there, but she didn't save people and children when she needed to. To me it sounds like she left them to die and burn. As in one PTSD flashback, you could hear fire burning. Ghost lurk on Helix, more like the memories of the dead. The flashes that Percy gets is very reminiscent of Isaac in Dead Space. But before I tell you what happens next, add time. Well, in the podcast for the UJC, they mention the failed state of America, also known as the FSA. 50 million people living in the slums, smog is so thick it blocks the sun, world building to why they have to conquer the solar system. Really selling an idea of Earth not so good anymore. It's a brilliant design of propaganda style ad that if you look carefully enough, you'll see it on the TV right in front of you in real life. Helix Station gives me the feeling of the sprawl in Dead Space 2 from what they're saying about it. The shopping precinct with billboards and the atrium with all the running hallways and the big open areas. The diamond in the dark is what its nickname is and Kane says they shouldn't be playing around in these areas of the solar system. Begs the question, why? Did the UJC come here many years ago because they knew what was out here? And who the fuck are the outer way? The team turns up to Helix and sees debris surrounding the station, also named a cloud of corpses. Poor. Oh. It's also surrounded by proximity mines. They really don't want anyone exploring this place. They crash land, and that's the end of episode one. The fugitive is apparently the most dangerous man in the galaxy. Something smells real fishy, I reckon. They get an order to shoot to kill. Ferris really wants him dead. We're told the carpenter drive went haywire and caused a meltdown and unloaded a bunch of ionized radiation into the station and kills everyone. Now. Ionizing radiation is a form of energy which removes electrons from atoms and molecules. You know, from the air, water, living tissue. To me, this makes humans more susceptible to a virus infection and mutating of human tissue. Hint, hint. This radiation travels unseen and passes through materials, you know, like metals and all that kind of stuff. I don't want to say the drive was destroyed on purpose, but I feel like they're definitely hinting at it. 
The Helix Station was full of colonists. It housed 500 million people and Percy was there 20 years previously. Depending on age, maybe she was a teenager or maybe a scientist studying the virus. But perhaps not as she is shocked and surprised later in the episode. Now let's move on to episode two. But make sure if you're enjoying this, you hit like and subscribe to see more Callisto content. This is where shit starts getting interesting. They get to Helix and start revealing some cool lore. Percy and Kane's ship gets destroyed, so now they're trapped and have to find the fugitive ship. They need what we call a black iron chip to fly the ship. The fugitive lopped a guard's hand off to get one, so, you know, it's gonna be fun. Percy will be doing this, I'm sure, in later episodes to escape, but I'm convinced they're going to kill her off in the last episode. Percy is still having real bad flashes and they slowly get worse as they make their way through the station. Radiation is high and the banter is rich in this one. Remember, you're just here to be our guide dog. A guide dog? That's right. And I'm the one holding the leash. So I suggest you don't go sticking your nose where it don't belong. Careful. This old guide dog bites. They start seeing black mold and some other fungus type goo growing in the vents. Definitely linked to the biophage I feel, as they have fungus and balls all over their skin once they mutate. Potentially an early growth or sludge from a mutated monster. The rats are infected and mutated with fungus, and boils growing on them much like the biophage. Are they just rat equivalents, or just leftover experiments, as they were definitely experimenting on the virus on this station? or where they released it for the first time. You gotta check in close quarters kind of situation before the big show, if you know what I mean. The rats attack, but they all get killed, but Percy is bitten. First sign they will kill her off is usually, that's the first sign when something has to be spread through a bite, or you know, those weird tentacle things that Big Mouth has. Ugh. Another interesting point is the plasma cutter reference. Great to hear this, trying to smash these two worlds together as the sprawl was over near Titan, you know, not too far away, and Kane doesn't leave home without one. It's a nice little nod. The security bots, I don't think are the ones from the trailers that we're seeing, as these are glitchy killing machines rather than straight up ordered to kill machines, like in the earliest trailer. It's like somehow Ferris flicked a switch in Black Iron with these robots, whereas these are running on low power mode and old antiques said to be around 100 years old. Percy gets scanned, fails, but on a second attempt, the robot recognizes her. Then the robot glitches and kills Tanaka. Unlucky. Look out for these names, as I'm sure they will be somewhere in the game. Metzger, Pentagrass, Tanaka, Percy, and Kane. The real cool bit comes up now. They find the man who isn't a criminal murderer, but a scientist who first experiment on we affectionately know as Big Mouth. They remove the core, which stands for the cranial optical recording engine or neck implant. What we see Jacob get stamped into his neck in the trailer. It's an all seeing eye, which records everything you see and can be played back, which they do and find out this scientist and an assistant is working on Big Mouth who took one day to mutate, unrecognizable organs, one foot mouth, hence the name, and they mentioned the microbe is very dangerous and a reaction with human DNA is like throwing fuel on the fire. I'm not saying gas on the fire, as it's fuel. Gas is gas, not a liquid. <laughs> this monster also has tentacles that reach down to its waist, potentially the first big mouth experiment. It is also mentioned that there is a live demonstration at the warden's orders. Like fucking what? A live demonstration? Jesus Christ. They locate the Black Iron Ride and discover a seven foot popsicle and frozen in the center being our lovable Big Mouth. The scientist has smuggled this monster off Black Iron to meet up with the Outer Way. Ah, the Outer Way. They also interrupt the UJC's propaganda adverts during the podcast, saying that the UJC lie and collect people to use and abuse them. But we technically don't know that till the next episode, which I'll be covering in the next review breakdown of episode three and four. Thank you for listening. I would love to hear people's theories of Helix in the comments below. Till next time.